Hello there and welcome back. So now let's move to tutorial 13. So in this case is do it by yourself. Okay, so I will just give you some instructions and then it's up to you to set up the case. So basically what we're going to do in this case is the Hamid body. Okay, so be, uh, here you have the case, the domain layout. Okay, so you have the geometry also, you can download it, but you have the drawings for the geometry, you can redo it, you can do something smaller, bigger, it's up to you. Okay, you can redo your mesh. So we're giving giving you something as a starting point. You want, you can use it or feel free to, to use something else. So basically this is what we have inlet, outlet, then we have the walls, as the walls, the, there's, there's, we don't have boundary layer and then important, we have a moving ground. Okay, so when you set up the boundary conditions, you should also set up here the ground that is moving just to simulate that as it, if the car were moving you know, in, in the motorway. So this is a validation, a classical validation case for the car industry, okay? There is a lot of data, but we are not going to push uh, into the validation. We're going to give you a lot of margin of error to get the results. Our goal is just to see if you are able to set up a case from scratch, okay? So you you will you are asked just to compute the drag coefficient, okay? So here you have the, uh, the case setup, the working conditions, okay? So working fluid will be air in compressible isothermal. Use the default properties, okay? The inlet velocity is forty meters per second, okay? And remember that you will need to set something similar on the ground. You can also run, try to run putting this one as a wall and you will see that there is a slight difference. You can check that, okay? You have here the reference area to compute the, <clears throat> the drag coefficient, okay? So when you set up reference values, put this one, the velocity and the working conditions of the fluid. You can use any turbulence model. We have addressed that, okay? Up to this point, we have covered a lot of theories. So now it's up to you to, to do to choose one to pick up one it's up to you okay or if you want you can test all the turbulence model okay it's up to you and then when you have results do some standard pulse processing okay so you will you, you will need to compute like, vertical structures integral lens scales the rate of integral lens scales to grid, grid lens scale couplings with velocity controls all lines separation lines string lines and so on okay so do some some heavy pulse processing then also when you try to assess the goodness of the mesh, also uh, if you are going to do your own mesh, try to do different meshes and see how things change according to the, me to, to, to the mesh. By the way, the mesh that we're giving is a wall modeling mesh. You can go ahead and use a wall resolving uh, mesh. Also try to do some sampling, okay, at any location in the, in the water surface or in the domain just to plot normalized velocity, but also in the domain you can do this. And you can run in a steady or in a steady, okay? But remember that you need to compute your statistic. So talking about the validation, so we're not focusing to pinpointing the, the precise value. We are just interested in, in, in seeing you can set up the case and get something within no unacceptable margin. So this is the drag coefficient and here we're giving you a lot of margin of error, okay? So you have a minimum and maximum. So if your final value comes within this 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 range, I think it's acceptable what you are doing. Okay. Again, it will depend a lot in the mesh quality. Okay. So if you get a super fine mesh, it's likely that you will get something that will be closer to the numer uh, numerical result to the experimental result. If you are using wall functions, maybe you will be a little bit farther. You can you you can assess all that. Okay. As I say, there is plenty of validation data for this case. You have the link in the web page. You can download it. We put some references there. Okay, and just we're just interested in the CD, but there are also in the web page. You know, you have a links to another web page where you can download some experimental data. You have some velocity profiles in in, in the in, on the AMEP body, okay? So it's up to you if you want to do a more detailed validation case. So here you have the references, okay? So feel free just to visit those. And what I was mentioning about, this is an interesting one, okay? So just let me go here and show you. Okay, so as you go here, you will have a lot of experimental data. See that in different locations of the body, okay? So you need to read well where in reference to what is that is specified. But here you have different velocity profiles, okay? So you can try to validate that, okay? And also there are some, some numerical <clears throat> 
some numerical solutions, and here you have some, some additional references there, okay? So this is an interesting link. So you have the references there, okay? <clears throat> and before showing you some colors or what, what I'm specifying for you. So remember that we, we address a lot of things in different terminals models, but also we talk about a little bit some models have deficiencies. No? So this is a question that always people ask. So how do I choose those auctions? No? How, how do I enable auctions? And just by looking at the ge geometry and having a, a minimum insight about the physics, but you're trying to to do, you, you can get an idea of what, what, what model would be the better and what corrections you need to, to enable. So these are the questions that you should ask yourself. So are there large stagnation points? Okay, look at the geometry and try to answer this question. Then are there sharp angles that can generate concentrated vortices? Remember that we looked at this at the curvature correction. So this will be related to the production limiter, curvature correction, or even the choice in the, of the turbulence model of the solve with the, with the vortex generator case. Is there a strong system rotation, swirling effects that you might need to resolve? That meaning that you, you will need to use a more sophisticated model Okay, to take into account the anisotropic behavior or nature of the flow. Okay, are there regions that, that cannot set periodic vortex shedding? And remember, we go back to, to one of the first tutorials, the unsteady one, the cylinder, that we have the unsteadiness, the von Karman, the von Karman vortex uh, strip behind the cylinder. So, are there regions here that might create that, generate that? Because this is immediately an indication that you need to use an unsteady solver. Okay, do we expect large flow separation? So by looking at the geometry, you can also get an idea. Okay, is there surface roughness? Now we, we, we talk about the surface. And finally, is the steady hypothesis acceptable for you? Okay, so just try to answer these questions and you will get an idea how to choose your your turbulence models, corrections, and set up your case. And just to show you so, some figures here. So see that here we have uh, already have the, the uh, results of answering the previous questions. Are there large stagnation regions? Look at here, the domain, the admit body. And yes, there are large stagnation regions. So it might be desirable to enable that correction, that production limiter. Okay, is you are using linear the viscosity models. Are there concentrated vortices? Look at here, yes. There are two big concentrated vortices here, but as you look down the, the, the body, you will see that there you have the, the steels, the support of the body that those small, those <clears throat> <clears throat> those geometries, those, those solids can also generate something similar to the von Karman vortex street. So it seems that you need to analyze, but yes, you have some vort uh, concentrated vortices. Then we look at velocity con uh, controls and what I was mentioning previously. Okay, so here, this is a cut plane and here in the bottom where you have the support of the body and see that you have these small cylinders and this, as you see here, you have a wake. Is this wake strongly unsteady? I don't know, it's up to you to assess that, or maybe you can neglect this because you, you will realize, okay, this is a small portion of the geometry, so it won't affect strongly my whole drag or leave comp comp computation. See here also that in, in the rear part of the body, you have this separation. It might be strongly unsteady, or it might be something that is, let's say, mid-mid-ly unsteady. Okay, so maybe the hypothesis for steadiness is a good one here. Okay, you, you will need to assess that. Then we look at the integral lens scale. Remember that we talked about this during the first lectures, but also when we address post-processing, okay, that you can compute this using two equation models, by the way, you, by all using these models, you can compute this, these quantities. And this is just telling you where you have the largest vortices. And it's a very good indication to know, to know where do you, do you need to have finer measures, okay? So you know that you have the whole wake, and basically this is t t telling you that, okay, this region, you have largest vortices, so maybe it will be a little, it will be desirable to refine the mesh there. By the way, I'm filtering this one, so I'm not putting the whole color, so using a filter, I'm just showing the quantities that are above a value, okay? So then remember that also we talk about the grid refinement ratio that is related to the interior lens scale, but also with the mesh. And we mentioned that it's desirable to have this grid refinement ratio more than five is you want to resolve the unsteadiness, okay? 
is you go to scale resolving simulations, this is very desirable. If you stay into the into the steady hypothesis, it's not necessarily, but it can be advisable just to go a little bit larger to resolve better the vortices. Well, see here that this one is basically telling you where you need to add more more cells to resolve better the vortices. So see that we, if we talk about that the value needs to be larger than five, see that here kind of we're about three. So basically kind of we need to double the mesh all around the wake. Okay, so see that this one is just showing you where you have the integral scales where you need to put more cells, okay? And now if I go, if I draw the mesh, okay, I have the cut, the cut plans and I not filtering now. So see that you have this mesh and basically clearly you can see here, for instance, here when you have the transition chains between these small and large cells, okay, you see that the refinement ratio drops fast, okay? So probably would be a good idea to extend the whole refinement box or all, all, all the way to the outlet. And also you can refine a little bit more this refinement box here just to get closer to five, okay, as you see here. But it's telling you precisely what you need to do that, okay? It's not that you need to do it in the whole domain, so maybe you will need to add some other boxes, refinement boxes to be, okay, more selective and to avoid you know, increasing the cells too much, the cell count too much. Again, remember that in Fluent that you have that very nice tool for adaptive mesh refinement, so you can try that tool. However, I always recommend to do, to, to refine the mesh, not using your, your meshing tool, because when you use that adaptive mesh refinement, it will add hanging nodes, okay? And this guy, I know that, a supporter of hanging notes, but they work, okay? But be careful when using those hanging notes. So those were just the general instructions and just going back to the, so you go to the website here, see that you will have here, okay, the instructions, you have the drawing, okay? So you can take this drawing and do your own geometry and do also different domain and giving you just one domain, okay? Uh, so here you have the mesh. Okay, so you are going to, I'm giving you a mesh here, a clean mesh. I'm not giving you the case, you need to do the whole setup. And here you have the key geometry also, only the, <clears throat> the space screen geometry. Also you have the eye, so you can modify that using the space screen, or the same model or on check, whatever you use, okay? So you have all the files here to start from a scratch, okay? So remember, this case is for you from a scratch, but I already gave you a lot of information. And finally, if you want some validation data here, you just download the paper. So you, you have a few papers there, mainly a collection that I have from here and some other master theses. Okay, so this is a very interesting case. Okay, so we're doing this in sense very simple, just drag coefficient, but see that many things can be measured. Okay, so that's all for, your, for this case. Okay, I hope you managed to get it running okay so if you manage to get this case working i think you are in a very good track okay you understand everything and at this point you will realize that what you need is just computational resources because we have the knowledge okay that's all for the for for the moment thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next final tutorials bye